Gallery. What is up, EOS Nation? Welcome, everyone, to the Hot Sauce number 199, presented live on Friday, May 12th. The Hot Sauce is the longest-running news show in the EOS ecosystem and the only place where you can get all your weekly updates in less than 25 minutes. My name is Stefan. I'm one of the top co-founders of EOS Nation. We're one of the top block producers on EOS, and I'm excited to be your host for today. we got a good show lined up for you today. We're talking in general about GameFi acceleration on EOS. We're going to be reviewing a couple of topics uh, that we've seen in the past, a couple of new ones, and uh, let's get right into it. Why don't we? So actually, first off, wanted to uh, give a thanks to all of the great guests we had on the fireside this week. So we had 11 guests in total. We had someone from Alcor, Wombat, Jillian, uh, the author of the CoinDesk article. We had a bunch of people from HaifaDA. We had Nathan James, Adam B from Zaisan, and a couple of others. So it was a really, really packed show. Uh, great stuff. We'll be talking a bit about some of the conversations we had there, but just wanted to mention that at the top of the show. And uh, yeah, thanks for all the people that are joining the Fireside, guests that are joining as well. And then thank you to all of you listening to the hot sauce live or on the recording, whether it's on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is, we appreciate you tuning in and we appreciate you being part of the EOS community. All right, so let's get into it. GameFi acceleration on EOS. So we talked last week very quickly about the Wombat X Accelerator program that was released just hours before we went live. We had a chance to get Adrian the co-founder and CEO of Wombat join us on the fireside this week to talk more about this accelerator program. And I'd like to just give you a bit of a, high, a couple of highlights from uh, some of the stuff that he said that I found interesting. So one thing that Adrian mentioned is that this is not a typical accelerator program where, you know, Wombat is looking for a big piece of equity from these companies in order to onboard them into the accelerator program. Really what Wombat is leveraging here is their, their large community. So they've been excellent. One of the best teams actually in the ecosystem at building a community, having engagements, engaging promotions. And of course, uh, Wombat is a wallet, but it's also a gaming platform. Both Web2 and Web3 games are featured on the Wombat gaming platform. And they've got lots of NFT integrations for those games. For people who are playing, you can earn points that can be converted to EOS while playing games as well. And so they've done a really good job at onboarding a lot of dedicated gamers that are enjoying the Wombat platform. And so what they're doing with this accelerator program is that they're looking for new great projects to be able to introduce to their community. So this would benefit the new projects, of course, but this also benefits their existing community for being exposed to new projects that are uh, that have a lot of potential. Uh, so Adrian kind of went over the philosophy behind that and also the philosophy of onboarding a bunch of great partners. So these partners vary from Web2 to Web3. There's the EOS Network Foundation that's a partner. And there's also other companies in the, the crypto space that are also partnering with the Wombat X Accelerator program. So in the um, and then one final thing that I remember Adrian saying is that while they don't take equity from the companies, they do ask for a small percentage of the token allocation. I don't remember exactly how small it is, but it's, it's, it's fairly small. And this these tokens are to be given back to the Wombat community through the various airdrops and great promotions that Wombat runs on, on their platform and on their social media. And uh, quick, uh, funny story, or not funny story, but just to highlight how impressive the Wombat uh, community really is. On the Pomelo side here, you know, we've been tracking some traffic stats, etc. And in season two, there was a point where Wombat sent out a push notification to all the Wombat users saying, hey, please check out our grant on Pomelo and please donate to support the Wombat platform. And we see a massive spike in traffic unlike anything we've ever seen on the Pomelo platform. Um, so, so that's always a reminder to us of how big the Wombat community is. And so anyways, just wanted to throw that out there. But uh, so 
you know, I'm excited for the program. Uh, registration is still open until the end of next week. So if you're a game and you're building on Web3, definitely check out Wombat X here. I'm showing the website wombat.app front slash wombat dash X and where you can find more information and you can also find the application form right here. So just about one week left for registration. Definitely get in there, register. And it's great to see um, you know, a program that's really win-win-win for everyone involved. And, and this includes uh, here the list of partners. We can see the ENF here, as well as Kronos, Newcoin, Beamable, Lifty, Abigen as well. All right, good stuff from Wombat. Moving on to some Pomelo news, which is also related to GameFi. So Pomelo recently, we published uh, uh, our latest article, Breaking Ground, Pomelo Grants launches multiple matching pools. So multi-pools will spread the love for projects and partners alike. So what does this mean? So this means that in season six of Pomelo, which is going to be officially announced very soon, we are going to be featuring different matching partners as well as multiple uh, multiple matching partners as well as multi pools. So, what does this mean? What do we mean by multiple matching pools? So, in addition to the pool that you're used to, which is the one Pomelo pool, which has been since the first five seasons just one big pool, Pomelo Grants will also have additional matching pools that may be focused on a specific category. For example, GameFi, or to be for a specific ecosystem. So what does that mean here? We've got a, an, an example of what a season could look like. So this is not, doesn't mean that th these are the numbers or the actual pools that are gonna be in season six, that's not been announced yet, but it's a, a nice example that showcases these new functional functionalities of Pomelo and how it's gonna impact the seasons moving forward. So in this example, we've got uh, one matching partner here. He's put up $65,000 in matching funds for the EOS ecosystem in the GameFi category, and it has to be a public good. Here, another $35,000 goes to, again to the EOS ecosystem. This category can be any category. So GameFi projects could also qualify for this pool as to, on top of content creation, other types of uh, projects, etc. And then uh, another pool could be, again, for the EOS ecosystem, but in the EVM category. So it gives you an idea of how these funds can could be broken down. And then we've got a second part matching partner here. For example, Telos could be putting up $35,000 for any, any type of application that's a public good um, and for the Telos ecosystem. And then we can have another partner and for this ecosystem, it would be the Antelope ecosystem. So that includes Zios, Telos, Wax, UX, and others. Um, and then, so here we could have uh, category any and does not have to be a public good. And here we have category IBC, which does need to be a public good. So this is a great example that showcases the flexibility that Pomelo will have moving forward and just more value that we'll be able to deliver to these communities and to the matching partners and to the donors. So we're really excited about this and we're excited to kick it off in season six. All right, some more details, so multiple marching, matching partners. So these are partners that are building on antelope chains that can fund a matching pool using their token. So how will multi-pools work? So grant owners will have to choose the pool they want to submit their grant to during the application process. So these different pools we can see here in this, in this example, and then grant owners will have to select the pool that best represents their grant. Grant owners select their categories and donors can contribute in EOS and more. So donors can keep contribute to grants in any matching round with EOS or other supported tokens, for example, Telos. Why have multiples? Having more than one pool will provide wider opportunities for ecosystem development. 
these projects making progress in a category that has its own pool will potentially have access to more attention and funding. So I think this line actually here is very important and it highlights um, the ability of Pomelo now to be able to more precisely uh, incentivize donations to specific range of projects, right? So for example, GameFi, which is a popular, popular topic these days, as well as EOS EVM potentially. So, so these new functions will really allow the matching partners to be able to incentivize, you know, more specific types of projects that they want built on in their ecosystem on their platform. So I think that's very exciting. As more networks build their ecosystems with funding through Pomelo grants, there's a potential to increase cross-chain collaboration as teams deliver public goods that can be used in more than one ecosystem. So that's really, you know, one of the unique advantages of the Antelope ecosystem and Pomelo is that a lot of these solutions that are developed for the EOS ecosystem, for example, very likely that some of the components, some of these projects are also going to be able to be used in other ecosystems on WAX, Telos, UX, and others. So that's a quick recap of uh, the latest Pomelo article, and hopefully uh, you're excited for the upcoming season six. Applications are going to be opening uh, in around maybe three to four weeks. No date has been officially set yet, but there was some a bit of alpha leaked uh, this week in the fireside. And so stay tuned to our Twitter at Pomelo Grants to stay up to date on all the latest Pomelo news. All right, how to supercharge your Ethereum dApps, introducing EOS EVM via the webinar hosted by both the EOS Network Foundation and Zaisan in collaboration. So we talked, we talked a bit about this last week, but I wanted to make sure you sign up. This is, webinar starts in five days on Thursday, May 18th. And Quick description of this webinar includes, you know, the EOS EVM allows developers to port and run solidity based tools with negligible gas fees and harness the accessible resources of the Ethereum community while take advantage of the powerful performance and reliability of the EOS network. So we've got some expert panel panelists going to be running this webinar. Adam Buktila, CPO of Zaisan. He was actually one of our guests on the Fireside this week. Uh, he spoke very well, very clearly. And uh, so if you want to hear more from Adam, I encourage you to watch the Fireside. Nathan James, Head of Developer Relations for the Yes Network Foundation, is also uh, a part of the panel, and as well as Matthias Romeo, Software Yes Network Foundation that has been doing a lot of work on the EOS EVM. Some of the discussion points for this webinar include adoption expectations and target audience, development process of the EVM, the funding and maintenance, potential beneficiaries and real world use cases, transactions paid in EOS, what are the implications for the community, but also for the project, block time and its impact, possible smart contract adjustments for blocked based timing, necessity of EVM with now ChatGPT's solidity to C++ rewriting capabilities. Well, that's actually sounds very interesting. Live demonstration of deploying a solidity smart contract on EOS EVM. So, you know, even as a non-developer, a lot of these topics uh, are very curious to me. And so I'm sure even if you're not a developer, you'll get a lot of uh, value and a lot of interesting knowledge at this webinar. And if you are a developer, of course, this is gonna be a great spot to start your journey into EOS EVM while also having access probably to ask our panelists some questions, uh, which are some of the most knowledgeable people about the EOS EVM. And of course, to link it back to the acceleration of GameFi on EOS, projects, GameFi projects that are interested in deploying on the EOS EVM that will be talked about in this webinar, Reminder, there's a $20 million fund waiting for GameFi applications to apply for um, that the ENF has put up. So definitely, um, yeah, get in this webinar, apply for funding, deploy your app on EOS EVM, and let's get the party started. Uh, here's the link to sign up to the webinar, uh, zaisan.io front slash webinar dash registration. 
even if you can't necessarily be there on Thursday, May 18th, if you want a recording of the webinar, you have to sign up anyway. So you can sign up and you'll get this webinar, whether you can attend live or not. All right, moving on to Haifa DAO, building DAOs for humans. Of course, we've been talking more and more about Haifa lately. They've got a huge grant from the ENF Foundation. I think it's around eight hundred dollars or $900,000. And they've recently announced that their waiting list is open for the, for the beta of the Haifa DAO toolkit. And so they've been actually very uh, vocal recently. They came on the fireside. We had a couple of guests from Haifa, four of them actually on the fireside, sharing some of the stuff that they've been working on. And there's also a Twitter spaces going on this week on Tuesday with the ENF and Haifa and uh, a lot of the friends that of, of Haifa's that are building in, this, in that ecosystem will be joining us on Tuesday for that. Twitter spaces. So definitely stay on the lookout for that. You can have a preview of what that's going to look like on the far side from this week. And uh, here, as you can see, Haifa has been doing a lot of uh, posting blogs, doing events, doing spaces, joining all sorts of communities, spreading the word about the DAO toolkit. So very exciting stuff for Haifa. And finally, um, wanted to quickly talk about a sensitive topic in the EOS community. Eve came on the fireside uh, this week to talk about Recover Plus and the implications that that program has in relation to the EOS EVM. So Recover Plus is a program that allows DeFi protocols to sign up to that program in order to share contact information and have procedures in place ready to respond in case of a hack. Uh, there was a hack of a DeFi protocol last weekend. Paycash uh, had uh, some sort of in incident. The details are not 100% clear at this point, uh, but what is clear is that some of those uh, hacked funds have been transferred out of EOS Native onto the EOS EVM, in a, which creates a situation where the Recover Plus protocol uh, doesn't have all the same tools to help mitigate these uh, these hacks uh, on the EOS EVM compared to the EOS Native. So Eve came on the far side uh, this week to kind of clear up some. Um, misunderstandings and kind of share the perspective from the EOS Network Foundation about how Recover Plus uh, reacted to this event and how the how the network reacted. And from what he shared, you know, the Recover Plus program, the block producers, uh, the ENF, everyone was aware very quickly that there was a situation going on. Everyone was at their battle station, so to speak, uh, ready to, to help as they could, uh, but for a variety of reasons, wasn't the lines of communication with Paycash were not uh, very clear or available. And so um, kind of Eve gave us a recap of what happened this weekend uh, from his perspective. So if you wanna learn more about that again, check out the Fireside from this week. Um, and I'm sure we're gonna learn more about the situation in the weeks to come and we'll be sure to keep everyone updated, of course. All right, wrapping up the show, just want to give a quick reminder to everyone, EOS Detective still exists. So this was a, um, a website we built at EOS Nation a while back, actually, and uh, just wanted to remind everyone uh, that it still exists and gives you some nice graphs of, of uh, transactions. So, for example, you can look up any account here, and then it gives you the graph of transactions, letting you see where um transfers that have uh that have been done from this account and where they went so it's a nice way to visually see how much uh where the transfers are going from one account to the other and uh yeah so if ever you're uh curious about stuff and you want to visually see some representations this one's one of my favorite EOSIO.EVM, right? The account that everyone sends their EOS to. Um, so here you go. You can kind of scroll through all of these accounts. Let's randomly click one here. 
although of course there's a lot of transfers here so it's kind of slow um but yeah i just wanted to remind everyone the yes, detective still kick in still uh going strong wax detective same thing so you can uh there's yes detective.io but there's also wax detective.io uh which also uh works right now it and actually has even more usage than the one on EOS. A lot of NFT projects use Wax Detective to kind of figure out some uh, bad actors that are interacting with their projects. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for me today. Thank you everyone for joining. And until next time, let's keep it spicy.